and Lee Dixon. So, video evidence for referees. It seems barely a weekend passes by without a manager, a player or a fan calling for replays to help the officials. But would it actually work? Well, there's only one way to find out. So we installed a video ref at Watford against Charlton last Saturday. And Carroll is back. Oh, my goodness, me! It's in, surely! Surely Spurs... There's the leg. It's, it's a penalty. From this angle, it's in. Every Premiership match like this one at Watford is covered by at least eight cameras. The action is therefore viewable from virtually every conceivable angle. These days, very little goes unseen. Well, today we've added a couple of extra cameras at the cost of just £500 so that we can tell whether the ball has or hasn't crossed the line. To complete our experiment, we've put a match observer up on the gantry and he'll be in constant contact with our video referee who's safely ensconced in one of the TV trucks. I'm Paul Harrison, refereed at the top level of English football for 10 years. I've refereed in excess of a thousand games overall. I am today's video referee. Well, Paul, I'm the match director for today's game. We've got dedicated 18-yard cameras which should get the offsides. And for today's game, we've got two goal line cameras. So if there is a ball that crosses a line, we can say definitively there is a goal or not. In terms of replays, in match coverage, we can get across them within two, three seconds of the incident happening. You can make a decision pretty much straight away. So to recap, our observer is playing the part of the match referee. And if he needs another look at something, he radios down to our video referee. We estimate our setup could be replicated at any premiership ground for less than £5,000. So let's see how it all worked out. Triskin. Francis! Oh, what a save! Buatza! Tommy Smith, he's got support from Buatza, who's buzzing around. Oh, it's a great chance! And it's 2 0! OK, let's take a look at that. He's level, isn't he? It's a good call. Yeah, we've looked at that, Stuart. Definitely onside, therefore it's a good goal. Checking to see if the goal scorer was offside took 17 seconds and the game resumed a further 14 after that. There would have been no hold-up in play here. Williams is up. Priskin! That was a nice piece of information. Really shirt, though. Can we have a look at that again? Obvious shirt pulling by the Charlton defender. Clear cut penalty for Watford. Our referee spotted this incident after a replay and then asked for another look. His decision came fully two minutes after the original infringement. The question here is how and when would the penalty have been awarded? Charlton just hanging on a little bit in the last minute or so. Let's take a look at that then, please. Yeah, he's well off. Good decision. Good decision. Well, that was a pretty clear cut offside. It took a speedy seven seconds to check. Our team was getting more efficient. Watford are going to have to dig deep here. Another lovely ball by Song, and this time it's a goal! Luke Young! and there just looked as though he might have stepped outside the area. By this time, decisions were being made very swiftly indeed. In just five seconds had elapsed here. Perfectly placed. Well done, ref. First touch for Romadal. Oh, it's a good ball in. And it's an equaliser! Darren Ambrose! So it finished two all, and Watford fans may feel aggrieved about the penalty they didn't get. That shirt pulling, by the way, wasn't seen by our match observer. So how would the incidents he did spot have affected the game? Well, in all, they would have delayed the action for just 27 seconds. What then did our video referee make of the experiment? I think it's a way forward. We clearly need to help the officials uh, as much as possible using technology. Uh, and I think it was a, an excellent exercise. Just a pity that we didn't get... Uh, a major incident that we could have really shown the benefit of. On the same day in Manchester, the game's power breakers were holding talks about a number of issues, including the use of video technology. We believe it's work in progress. What I think we've tried to do is today give people the guidelines. Goal line technology, 100% accurate, instant recall, 
and communications tight within the match officials. I think, in a way, if I was a developer, that would give me a clue as to what I've got to achieve. So it looks like goal line technology is on the way. We brought together a panel consisting of a pundit, a journalist and a fan to discuss the possibility of using video replays in all areas of the game. What I found interesting in the most controversial aspects of that game, yes. which was the, pull, the shirt pulling the from Al Kakuri, well, what interested me as a former player is no one appealed. But this is the problem with video refereeing, which is that the laws depend very largely on interpretation, which is fine, and I agree with you that it does work, but you can't have that and ultra-accurate video refereeing. You can't have both. It's, you know, it's gas and electricity, it's two different things. But this gentleman you can't was plug a, one into the wrong... But this gentleman was a fan, he was at the game, I've no doubt he would have loved to have seen a penalty. I, I, we saw the game, we saw the shirt pull, and I actually agree with you, I don't think that um, it would have been given nine times out of ten. You just thought, nah, it's, it's not worth the bother, you know? We, Having we... said that, the first game of the season at Everton, uh, we had a possible handball in the penalty area, which was ruled out, and then Chris Powell got hit in the face, yeah. And that was a penalty. Are we in danger if we allow video evidence to be a part of the decision making at the time of the incident? Yes. That you are in danger of taking away the spontaneity from the game, yes. the hope, the controversy, which, which, whether we like it or not, we all love when it doesn't, when, when it suits us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but we can't have it both ways. We can't yes. have the controversy just when it suits us. Yeah. But that, you're concentrating on an incident in play there, and um, for example, if. Uh, we've had examples of offsides where um, our players have been clearly onside, gone on and scored, been flagged for offside. Mm. You could run a video evidence back if you had a camera roughly around that area where the offside's occurring. And that's an important decision. But that's that one that can't. That's season. one. Once that flag goes up, you can't unflag. You've actually hit, in my opinion, on precisely something that, that indicates the flaws of video. You can't have that. You can't sort of suddenly say, right, everybody now has to go back to the position in which, in which they were. Now, we, we're all agreed that we can use it for goal line. There's probably no one in the world who doesn't think you should use it for goal line. So that's what we can. And I don't think there's an awful lot else. There is one last area, I think, of, of discussion that's worth having, and that is in the World Cup final, mm. we saw when Zinedine Zidane yeah. Headbutted Matt Classic, yeah. I didn't I'm see convinced it. the referee and the officials on the pitch didn't see it. Nope. Who saw it? The video had captured it. Someone had looked at him and, and, and conveyed the information can, to I, the referee. Can you think of any other explanation than that this was the first video referee decision in the history of football? It, it, it certainly was, wasn't it? No, the, the, the issue... You know it and I know it. The issue but, is... And no okay, one what's the question? It. Well, the question is, were they right to send him off, bearing in mind the referee didn't see it? Yep. Or were they wrong to do They so? were. And it's funny, I've, having, were, argued, having argued against video refereeing, justice was done in that instance. So how can you argue against it? Justice was done. We're not going to talk about goal lines, because I think we probably all agree with that. What about that last point, though, Martin? You shouldn't be able to get away with, with you know, lamping somebody on the pitch. <laughs> if the referee yeah. doesn't see it or the linesman doesn't see it, what is wrong with a guy in the stand, even yeah. if it takes a couple of minutes, saying, he's got to go, violent conduct? Well, they're the two areas, you know, the ball crossing the line and violent conduct, you know. We don't want to see that in the game. And, and obviously, in the match itself, it has a knock-on effect where somebody perhaps is looking for retribution there and uh, that was dealt with and we have to say that that must have been video evidence at the time but very interesting debate you know perhaps it raises more uh, you know questions than answers but um, it's going to be difficult to implement uh, and it but would, you be, would you be against that red card for somebody who hits somebody on the pitch which is seen by the third no, eye I think someone's it? got to go I mean I think I would be happy to see that yeah okay now what about the shirt said you didn't type? like violence <laughs> didn't mind it when you were playing though did you <laughs> hey we're all allowed to change what about what about the shirt tug because that is different because it took two minutes yeah. but what for winning 2-0 at the time that's a chance 3-0 chance for three points everything at stake difficult one I, I just don't think that you can that you can take a game back two minutes later uh, earlier and say actually there was a shirt pull there you've got to go back give a penalty I just don't think you can the game we all love the game the way it's played that the, the the speed and everything if you take the way the referees decisions completely then then I think you've, you've lost the game but of football it, but and but I, Lee, and hang on, a Watford fan watching this is going, no, Lee, we'd love it to be taken back and be given the chance yeah, to go 3 Yeah, but we, we we've all got those situations. We've all got Arsenal penalties not given. We've all got Liverpool ones. We've all got our own stories. But that's the beauty of the game. I think, you, you know, if it's a clear-cut thing over the line, we've agreed on that. I think maybe the next stage is when you're going into the penalty area. Was it in the box for a penalty? Was it a foul? 
on on a, on a, on the edge of the box or was it in the box? I think maybe that area. But anything else, offsides? How can you how can you play an offside and then and then play on to see if he scored? If he doesn't score, go. Well, let's check it. Let's go back. Something I think you, the game has got to be let, left to flow as much as possible. Uh, I know. I know. Offside is very close to both your hearts for obvious <laughs> reasons. But um, could you not just? I mean, you've got to play to the whistle anyway. So unless it's absolutely obviously offside, could the referee not just play on? If it goes for a goal kick, doesn't matter. Well, if it's a goal, that, could you not refer it then? Well, actually, was it offside defender, or not? You, you're trying to change the, the, the habit of a lifetime. You, you immediately put the brakes on. You see the linesman put the flag up. You know, arguably, you could have got back and made a tackle. So it's just, you know, I do, I do feel the offside is just an impossible one for them to do. I think they keep it simple and, and start slowly introduce, you know, this video evidence. And then eventually, you know, when they're more confident, they can bolt more onto it. OK, so what are we saying? Goal lines and violent conduct? For now. For now, yeah. For now. OK. Now we